So Daniel Wiles, uh, the jack of all trades, so to speak, mm -hmm. with Avon Guard and, and many other groups that you've worked with throughout DCI, WGI, and VOA, um, but mainly with Avon is who we're going to be talking about today. Um, so the Avon Guard is going through, obviously, as well as many other groups across the country, what a season is like with COVID-19 and, and realizing what virtual events are kind of like. And, you know, me on the flow marching side, it's brand new for us, too. So um, first of all, how are you doing, um, Daniel? And how has the last year kind of been for you um, from somebody in your position with a program of such status? Oh, I'm doing well. You know, I think we're all doing as well as we can. It's certainly been a rough year. And, you know, you see a lot of all of our friends post and I, I want to be the first one to tell everybody, hey, it's OK to have had some tough times over this year. This has been tough. I mean, the isolation, you know, we're all lucky. I mean, I've got a wonderful family and I've been able to spend an incredible time with them that I, you know, know was probably something I needed just as much as I needed to take a break as well. Obviously when it started and there was, you know, the end of WGI, that was devastating. But then even into drum corps being canceled was kind of like, wow, I haven't had a, you know, I do this fall, summer, you know, summer, fall, winter, summer, fall, winter, summer, fall, winter, ah, you know, and I, it's crazy. So at first I can't even lie that May and June was really good. You know, it just felt good to, relax a little bit and you know we were still trying to do marching band things but you know we all kind of knew it that was in trouble as well but you know that time was really great and then you know as the summer wound down it just started to get bored you know and we were lucky we we went ahead with Avon Fall and we did a, a show called Vintage and you know we, we had like a three and a half four minute program and it was great it was really a, a, an homage to Avon the best of the best of the best of us you know Yet when we got to mid-September, it did get a little like, okay, we've done this. There's, we're not refining it. We're not changing it. We're not adding the next five minutes. So that became a little, you know, just it just kind of got to us from as designers working with the kids. You could even tell the kids were kind of like, when do we start the ballad? And you're like, well, we're not, you know, or that's it. This is what we're going to do. And you could feel them missing those parts. So as that season wrapped up, it was still like the itching to do what we do, really, you know what I mean? And I think that we're all still feeling that, everyone around the country. Yeah, I mean, we're going now into the really beginning of the 2021 WGI season. And I'm sure that that pent up performance, like ambition is just building even more so now. Um, how has it been to kind of like, match expectations and goals with the guard this season uh, going into this now competitive season? Well, I'm sure my, my story will be interesting, you know, um, with us, you know, as we got done with fall, like I said, you know, not only were we missing the season, but we were missing that, that drive, you know, that, that creative thing that we all need, you know, I mean, Michael Townsend and I, we do the shows together really for the winter, especially well in the fall as well. And, um, you know, we just kind of sat around the fire a lot talking about what should we do? You know what? And, and I, I kind of came at it from an angle that, you know, we've got seven seniors in our guard this winter. And, and, you know, we, we had a lot of seniors that clearly lost the end of last year. So when you think about it, if you're a senior in this guard this year, you got to go to WGI in 18 and 19. That's great. Those kids are very fortunate. You know, they're really lucky to have been a part of the program for that. But now when you think about it, they lost 20 and 21. So when you came into this guard four years ago, you were, you doubt you were going to have four WGIs. You got two, you know, and that's, that was sad. You know, I've, I've, I've lamented a lot about how sad that is for them. So, you know, as we were picking our show and deciding the route we wanted to take, um, we really thought about them, you know, we thought about what they've done and even what they gave up and then what they've done for the program to stay, you know, I've, we lost some seniors, we lost some people along the way, but these seven kids that remained, you know, you could tell that they knew they were leaving a legacy as well. They knew what they had been given by the, the students before them. And they knew how important it was to give that back to the color guard now. And I thought that was 
really probably the most inspiring thing I've seen in, in the last 20 years is that any any senior in the band or the guard could have easily made this year like I'm going to go get my school stuff together this is not going to be everything that it always had been and I don't know that I want that well I have seven kids that kicked that in the face and said we're going to help these younger people we're going to keep the Avon legacy alive you know I mean it so I've been here, this is my 21st year here. And I needed that. Michael needed that. We needed to design. We needed to come up with something that felt like what we do. You know, so um, Indiana is, is, um, has done really well in terms of how we dealt with the, the CDC guidelines and everything like that through the fall. And we were able to have some in-person contests, not to the level of what Texas did, but we had in-person um, performances. They were kind of exhibitions. We would have four groups, clear the stands, four more groups. So we did get to perform, uh, I believe four times, three or four times. And that, that, that satisfied, you know, that thirst for a little bit. But even when we were talking with our Indiana board, you know, we were kind of like, they did it well. So we thought in the winter, we were gonna be able to do this live. And we do, I mean, this weekend is our first show. Since last, you know, March, whatever it was, 5th or something, we had our state prelims. And the next day the world was shut down and the season was over and we all know what we've gone through. But even over the summer with our board, I've been on our board for some 20 years as well now. And, you know, we were really pursuing it then saying, okay, let's think about this. How will we do this? How can we do this? How do we have these shows? So that was exciting because we knew like, all right, we can offer them that. We knew that we were going to offer an in-person possibly, you know, obviously we knew that if it all, if the world gets shut down again, we're all going to virtual no matter what. But we were excited at the prospect that we could keep having live events and cross your fingers, you know, we're excited that this Saturday is the first one. And we're, our kids are, are so excited about it. But when that happened, you know, what's great is um, Center Grove, Carmel, all these groups in the area, they're having winter guards as well. So, you know, like this weekend is our first competition and it's against Center Grove. You know, the last time we saw them, we're button heads and here we're going to go again this weekend. So, you know, you, you can never say that the kids don't love that part. They do love the competition part. They they like that, you know, and our kids have been excited. They're excited to see Center Grove this weekend. They're excited to compete. They're excited for all of that. So with that being said, you know, Michael and I just decided we were going for it. We weren't, we weren't going to change the way we taught the kids because clearly we have to prepare for the future too. You know, no matter what, this is going to end hopefully soon. And and we're going to get back to it. And we just didn't want to look at our kids and say, we're going to, we're going to take a step back. We're going to do something less than we would normally do. You know, I know there's been a lot of great things, what Tarpon did in the fall. That's wonderful. You know, our goal was to say, okay, in the winter, we're going to give our seniors what they deserve. We're going to give them our best. And that was our goal all along. And, um, we feel really good about it. You know, when you see our press release thing, you'll see, you know, I, I've dedicated this season to our seniors. These seven kids have taught us more about perseverance and love and giving back than I've ever seen in my 50 years on this earth, quite honestly. So, you know, this season was really a tribute to them, um, which probably leads you to the question of what are we doing? Uh, you know, so obviously year after year, we have these ideas and, and we wonder whether this one's right for that. When we did the Tanner show, clearly we had that young man and we were like, okay, we should do this show now. When we had the circus show, we had Keely, Morgan and Lance, and we were kind of like, okay, we've got this thing that we want to build it upon. And um, this one was, you know, like every other one, we, we have music that we're really fond of. You know, we've been really fond of, you know, I don't know how many people really know this, but when you see a Clint Eastwood movie that he's directed, he's also been involved in the film score. You know, a lot of times writing the music for the film. So when we did um, the circus show three years back now, it was, that's a Clint Eastwood piece. You know, that, that music from that, he wrote that. So, you know, we've done a little bit of other things with Clint Eastwood music, but Michael and I just love it. We think he's brilliant. So. You know, if you've seen the movie Gran Torino, 
well, the, the, the main theme for the movie, Gran Torino, is sung by Jamie Cullum. But even in our version that you hear, Clint Eastwood sings the first minute and a half of the song. So, you know, the, the song is called Gran Torino, but, you know, he, he references realigning the stars, you know, realign all the stars. You know, a lot of a lot of the things within the song are, you know, the best line in the song is um, your world is nothing more than all the tiny things you've left behind. And that inspired us. You know, we were like, this is what these kids are doing. They're leaving this legacy that these kids are going to say in a year that they could have easily said, I don't you know, I don't want to do it they were like, we need to help the future of the program too. That was inspiring to us. So that really led us to this show. It really led us to this idea. And, um, you know, what you'll see when you see Avon this winter is, you know, I, I like to tell people, I mean, I'm not sure we're not as strong as we've ever been, quite honestly. We do all the things that we normally would do you know, we'll get into the COVID precautions, but, you know, we've been going since July 5th. We have yet to have one child test positive. We're very proud of that. And that's because of Delee. She's our guard mom. And what we do to go through every rehearsal, start, you know, get our equipment. You know, they're all bringing their equipment yet. Yeah, there's, you know, that, as with every program, I'm sure there's just gobs of hand sanitizer everywhere, but sprays and all of the things that we've had to do were, were so important, but you know, we we wanted to go for it. We wanted to give them what we would normally give them. And I think when people see it, they're gonna be really excited about it because it's really special. It's really special in a lot of different ways, too. That we've tried some things that are unique. You know, we didn't want to use props. You know, we were like, okay, no props. How do we how do we do something different and we don't use props? So we're not touching them, we're not moving them, we're not doing all this stuff. And what you'll see in the show is, you know, we use all of our equipment on the floor in our design process. Everything is laid out. And, but, you know, like I said, how the, the, you know, the, the world is nothing more than all the tiny things you've left behind. Not only do we pick them up, but we leave them behind too, you know? So everything throughout the show is staged and set up, you know, we use these scarves at the beginning of the show and then we set them down and we create a star when he says realign all your, all the stars, you know, and um, you'll see it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty magical in the way that we, you know, we're pretty proud of it because it was a design tool that neither of us had ever exposed ourselves to either. You know, we've talked a lot about how you could leave your equipment. How can you do things within, you know, we have a flag design that looks like the Northern lights and you'll see it across the back of the floor and it's just on the floor and it stays there the whole time until we pick it up eventually. And every time you see us pick up our sabers, they're in little stars on the floor. And then like, oddly enough, you'll see it. We put it down. We, we, swing on by, pick all the equipment up, and you're like, wow, where'd that come from? You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. It was in the floor design. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, that's just a constant part of what we do is that idea of leaving something behind, leaving something of yourself behind. And it's just a great message. You know, it's been wonderful to talk to them about these type of things. You know, we did our, we did our socially distanced history night the other night we were in a big band area, you know, all the kids are separated, but we still put the videos up and let us, we talked about all 20 years about it. And, and they're looking at it. And I, you know, some of the best things the kids have ever said were, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, these kids from 2002, you know, imagine if you're 18 in 2002, well, that was 18 years ago. You know, you're a 36 year old woman right now. You probably have kids and you're living your life and your career. And it was so neat to have the kids say things like 18 years from now, Daniel will still be here. And I said, I'll oh, stop that. Daniel will not still be here 18 years from now. But, you know, I was like, it's true. Hopefully 18 years from now, when they do Avon history night here, you will be, you know, and here you, and they're looking at you through your eyes, you know, and, and they're looking at the program and wondering what they will do to leave their impact on it. So, you know, I, I think when people see Avon this winter, we're really excited for you to feel the, the, you know, the majesty of Color Guard. It's everything that we do. And like, it's our, you know, it's our gift to our, our kids and our gift to our seniors. And 
it's just been wonderful experience to, to work with the guard so far. So I want to back up a little bit. You were talking about how, and well, and you've mentioned it multiple times since um, about the seniors and these seven seniors that, you know, they took it upon themselves to bring up some of the younger members and, and make sure that that's on par with what would be expected of Avon, what you expect out of the group and what, you know, all of us fans expect. Um, and now you guys are kind of like rewarding them by making them stars quite literally. Um, yeah. But um you know, how has, how have these seniors, the leaders in the group, maybe juniors as well, um, and otherwise, how have they kept these skills up? How have they brought up these younger members while maintaining these COVID protocols, all these extra steps that need to take place um, to keep them safe and, and, and healthy? Uh, you know, obviously a lot of it's laid out for us. You know, there's a lot of guidelines that we follow that the schools had to follow, whether they're doing basketball, whether they're doing football, anything that they're doing, our principal's been outstanding. Matt Shockley, if he ever sees this, he's been incredible. He, he, he treated the band the same way he treated every sport. And, you know, cause you can, I'm sure there are people that say, how can we have football, but we don't have guard. You know what I mean? And, and we are really, we, we, we respect him so much before all of this. And I'm here to tell you, it's, it's been pretty incredible that he gave us the same respect that he gave every, the drama department, you know, any, any department in the school received that same type of protocol. And as long as you followed the protocols correctly, you know, so we followed those clearly. Um, but the individual kids, you know, it's just, obviously we've had our normal rehearsals maybe a little less, you know, in, in the normal year, we might go three nights a week, a little bit longer this year. We kind of cut back on that. Um, but probably one of the biggest reasons was that, you know, we didn't go to BOA. So we started about a month earlier than we normally do. You know, we came back from our fall break. We have a two week fall break every October, no matter what. And once that was over, our fall season was over. So we started right away. So we got about a month head start on our season that we don't normally get which will probably kill us in the future because we loved it. We were like, wow, we really get more time to kind of get together on what we want to do. So I don't know how that will impact us next year, but regardless, that's kind of what has set us up to have the success we're having because, you know, we knew it, we were going to have quarantines. You know, we did have a week um, about two, three weeks ago where we had, we have 24 kids in the guard and we had 11 kids out for about five days, you know, just overlapping some stuff that was like, okay, it was just part of their protocol. So we dealt with it, you know, and what was great though, is because we were able to get ahead on the show, our staff has been incredible about posting the videos and everything is just online, you know, and ultimately we, our goal was to get done as soon as possible. So that way, if there was a student who was out, you know, we do look at them and say, you know, you learned the part, so you're gonna have to work on these things a little on your own. We're giving you a ton of tutorials to make sure you do stay up with a part. You know, and obviously with a show like this, there are some parts where there's 25 parts going on, but you'll look on our page and be like, well, they're all there. So the kids know, oh, I do that part and I've got to make sure. And, and it was amazing because the seniors and the juniors, everyone really helped one another another to make sure that if you missed that night you either knew where to get to it or they said something like hey if you want to you know the night you come back from quarantine if you want to meet me at 5 15 i could help you and make sure that you know that part you sort of learned off a of video you know and that that was how we kind of kept up on that and i just think that you know, we would normally have eight hour rehearsals. We'd have like a five hour block on a Saturday instead. And, but the great thing was maybe they got together with their a partner an hour beforehand. And we tried to do it that way, where it was a way that they could still help one another out where it could be safe. Yet that student didn't feel like they had to come right back in and get shoved into the show without having any help. So, I mean, I can only say that, you know, our guard mom, Dali again, she she's probably been at rehearsals more than I have at times because she'll be like, I'm, I'm willing, I'll go up and meet the girls early. And I'll be like, well, I've got to take my son to win rehearsal. So I'm not going to be there then. Or someone's still working at Starbucks because they had to get a job to keep taking care of themselves. And we're all trying to help each other do that. But Dilly has just been so incredible also to, 
facilitate that for the kids when they need it. There might be a time on our Facebook page where a student might say, hey, I'm coming back on Saturday. I think I've learned all the parts, but I'm, I come, I'm off quarantine on Friday. Could someone stay after school? And then bam, I mean, a minute later, you'll see somebody post a response that says, I can be there to help you. And, and I, my heart would just smile. Like a kid didn't have to do that, but they're just like, yeah, I'll help you. I'll be there. And, and that would, you know, the kid would show up the next day, they'd be a little lost in the staging and stuff, but we would just be like, we'll take some time, we'll help you figure out where you are. But they would, everybody's always come prepared. And that's, that's really been the, the wonderful part of it. Yeah, it kind of takes that. Um, I mean, this is a lot of stuff that would happen, you know, in a normal season, in person and regularly, like, um, if somebody misses due to sickness, but obviously, it's amplified like 10x. And then, um, it really moves things, not only the performance is virtual, but also this like student to student interaction, um, getting people caught up. Um, what kind of like along these lines with, with keeping COVID safety in mind and everything like that, what are some things that you think might help other groups that you guys are doing that are like, that's like really working that you think is maybe unique to your program? Um, well, I know we all have different social media platforms. I'm not sure how everybody goes about it. You know, ours, we do use a Facebook page and that's been a great way for us to communicate, you know, because obviously, you know, these terrible stories that you hear about kids that have been isolated and, you know, I, I'm fortunate. My, my daughter's in the guard too. And I'm really glad that Avon has done their best with Mr. Shockley to keep the school open. Even we've gone through hybrid, we've had some e-learning stints and most of those happened because of teachers. You know, it was, it was rarely because of students. It was a lot of times because we didn't have enough teachers to actually be in the building on that day. You know, and obviously within the, our social media platform, you know, using the Facebook page, that's been our greatest, you know, and I know a lot of people have had to do video things with their students. And we're seeing all of that because I love seeing friends post things that their students have done. And, and that's incredible. That, that's been our best way. I mean, really, everything that we've done has been through that page. And, and, and it's not only been, you know, um, the physical aspects. It's been the emotional aspects. You know, there are kids that have events together talking. You know, and, and like we've had, we, we when we were, um, you know, when we would be quarantined or, you know, every day we have class still, but there might be a kid in quarantine. Well, we've got to put that video up during class. And I'll tell you, one of the best things is like all the kids will go to that video. And last week it was Carissa, you know, she was the only one missing. And they, every kid would go up to the camera, get their head in the camera and be like, hi, Carissa, we miss you so much. And, and you could tell that, even for Carissa, she needed that. She misses her friends. She misses what it is to socially interact. You know, I know that, especially in a video game world, it's crazy. But, you know, like, I'll even say one of my most interesting things for my own son, my nine-year-old, you know, having FaceTime, being able to be with friends that way. Imagine if we hadn't had that. What you and I are using right now. Imagine if we didn't have this. You know, imagine this, this, um, pandemic happening two or three years ago. What would our lives have been like without it? Would Zoom have had to boom it that quick, much quicker? I don't know, but wow, it would have been amazing. And I mean, imagine that, and we are still struggling as a society with isolation and people, you know, not being able to interact enough to have that normal, that normalcy of, of what it is to interact with other people. Well, our kids have also done that. You know, that's the most amazing part. It's not just she comes to teach her some flag work or some rifle work, but they're checking in on each other. And they're always making sure that, you know, especially if there's a quiet person, you know, that everyone will kind of rally to that person like, hey, what are you doing? How's it going? You know, because in lieu of being able to get together and have sleepovers and things, because we clearly had to go to all of our kids and our parents and say, look, if you want the season to happen, you have to be incredible at social distancing. You have to not have big parties. You have to be conscious of this because it can shut it down at any point. And I think, I think across the land, you know, so many of us, it was taken, or all of us, it was taken from us so abruptly. You know, yesterday we were sitting there on our, uh, we were doing our, our history night. I'm sorry, that was Tuesday. And, um, and again, I just, I almost cried because I just sat there with them like, I will never take it for granted. 
no matter how hard every, any season is, no matter when you, you worry about whether you should give up or what, you know, what are you giving up in your life for this? It's like, I don't think any of us are ever going to take for granted the time we get to spend. And I think that the kids have shown that tenfold. Yeah, well, I wish you the best of luck this weekend um, when you get to go see Center Grove and have some nice uh, competitive spirit, um, get that feedback, but also just, you know, get back in, in a gym with um, the whole group and feeling that performance um, energy and everything back in there. Um, but we look forward to seeing you on WGI virtual events, of course, all season long. I think WGI has done a wonderful job setting all of this up with flow marching as well. And I, and I think people are going to be pretty excited about this. You know, no matter what, as much as we're all used to WGI and we want that, you know, most of this does happen on video all throughout the season. Everybody gets excited by seeing that. I'm excited to see what the other guards are doing. I'm excited for people to see Avon. I'm, I'm excited to experience what we all love again. And, it, and I'm excited to see what people have come up with whether they're doing the competitive part or they're doing, you know, I've, you've already seen some of those things released. I'm, I'm just excited to see the kind of things people come up with. I know it was a challenge for us to try to design a show differently than we would normally. And I'm excited to see what people come up with because there's a lot of brilliant people in the activity. And I think we're going to see some special things this winter. Yeah. But nice little break there about a year ago and then just a rush of creativity about to happen over the next few months in the winter guard activity, I think. Yeah, they say that most artists, you know, after horrific events in life, you see a lot of great art created from that. So I think we're going to see that across many spectrums of art. So that's that's pretty exciting time for that part of it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today, Daniel. Um, obviously, you, wish Daniel. you and the Avant Garde the best of luck this season. Always a pleasure, sir.